so I'll read it and then I'll talk. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 4. Greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. And before he said that, he said, I thank God whom I serve, notice now, from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Not only is he praying for him, but there is an emotion that's involved. There is a deep love, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore I put in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel, according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given in the, us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Can somebody say amen? I want you to look at somebody dead in the face like you're angry with them. Tell them I know you've been going through some things. But that doesn't stop anything. Look at somebody else and say break out. Yeah. Amen. God bless you. Tonight. You may be seated in the presence of God. Without even, without even viewing the interaction between Paul and Timothy without seeing them together, one can easily read the feeling and the emotion and one can feel the connection between them simply by assessing and understanding Paul's writing. Not only are we looking now at the technical presentation of scriptural doctrine, but we are feeling a spirit between Paul and Timothy. It is a spirit of love, of affinity. It is a spirit of guarding of umbrellaing because Paul realizes that here is a young man who's gifted but he is going to have to exhibit character in order to totally and completely fulfill the mission of God. I will not spend a lot of time here but it is significant to all of us that we realize that you can be gifted and still go nowhere. Because unless you have character to go along with the gift, there is a great possibility that you will be gifted and still not achieve. It is here then that Paul is feeling this sense of affinity towards Timothy. Because he realizes if I am going to give him the mantle, if I am going to release to him the power of the gospel, and anytime you have the power of the gospel, you're going to run into great opposition. Because anytime God has his hand on you, ooh, the devil is coming after you. Oh, don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself. Anytime you have been gifted by God, the enemy is going to do his very best to destroy, not the gift, because the gift he can't touch. 
but he'll destroy the bearer of the gift so that he will not fulfill the purpose by which God placed the gift in him. It is this then that he's concerned about. If you notice, he's told him in verse 8, and I won't go back there, that he should not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, uh, but be a partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. Now, that seems just a little ambiguous to me. I might not say it's contradictory, but it seems a little ambiguous because it raises a question. And that is, if he deals with the issue of according to the power of God, he is not saying out of. He is not saying out of, and I make it plain. I can be a billionaire and you came to me and you would come to me with a proposition and I would look at it and say to you that I am going to give you something out of what I have. And of course you get excited. You tell everybody the billionaire has decided that he is going to give you something out of what he has. And you come expecting a big check. And I turn around and give you $25. And, and of course, the disappointment is great, but I did not lie to you. Because I said to you, I'm going to give you something out of what I have. Now, if I say to you that I'm going to give you according to what I have, now that is a whole nother thing completely. Because what I'm saying is that my total financial resource will be placed at your beck and call. Now, here is something that's difficult. Uh, yes, it's difficult because how is it that I am a partaker of the affliction of the gospel and the power that I'm being presented with to partake of the affliction is according to the power of God. Now, here's how I feel. Since you have all that power, why should I have any affliction? Uh, it would seem to me that if you were operating not out of, I could understand if you were going to throw me just a few crumbs, then I ought to have some affliction. But if you're operating in me according to your power, then why should there be any affliction in the first place? I think oftentimes when we have come into the house of God, we have come into the house of God to be paid. And we have forgotten that oftentimes there is a cost to Christianity. And whenever God begins to move you into places of spiritual power, the devil's coming after you. Ah, and so you don't take the negative negatively. You take the negative positively. Because you understand that once God has gifted you, he has made you a target. And when he makes you a target, then he begins to empower you according to his power that you might participate in the affliction which is natural to the gospel anytime you are gifted that's why if you notice Paul he doesn't only pray for folk who aren't making it he prays for folk whoever he identifies as a person that God has his hand on if you see a child with a gift and you know God is in your child you ought to pray every day for that child if you see somebody that God is hovering over and about to give an anointing to, you ought to pray. Don't only pray for the drug addict. Don't only pray for the person in the street. You ought to pray for every person in the house of God that is a target because God has gifted them. Oh, I feel it here. The affinity, you can feel it because he understands that Satan wants this man to fear. And whenever you have been in a fight, and I have found out that walking with God is a perennial fight. 
there are attacks on every side and when you're in a fight there is always a dichotomy between fear and faith because my senses my sensual perception picks up through my situations and my circumstance that something real is against me and I am expecting in the middle of a real battle to reach into faith for a God that I cannot see while I'm looking at some real issues in front of me. Ah, the Greeks, uh, they, they, they looked at fear as flight and, and that's where we get the word phobos and it means flight and it indicates something which causes fear fear it's something that makes you phobic and it brings the phobia to the point where you just want to get away want to get away you just want to run away from the circumstance and it causes you not to face the circumstance but rather to escape from it uh, its etymological root suggests that there is terror you are being terrified and what the Satan loves to do is to cause terror because once you are walking by fear you are not walking by faith uh, and so he raises up certain ominous situations that causes you to back up and causes you to reduce your ability to move forward because you are afraid of what is in front of you and what is around you it doesn't matter how gifted you are if you are not not able to release that gift through the power of boldness the gift just lies dormant in your system uh, not only is there del uh, phobos but the Greeks took it further and it's the word used in the text and that's the word delia and what it denotes is a cowardice it's a timidity and it's never used in a good sense and here we notice Timothy when he He's mentioned uh, Paul does not mention a male figure in his life he mentions his grandmother and his mother which means that for the most part and the truth of the matter is their sisters I, I hate to step on your toes tonight uh, but mothers have a tendency to smother I guess maybe that's where the smother came from they, they have a tendency to cover their children uh, if you anything like my mother I have an older brother and uh, uh, Chris is about 58 or so and a mother still has a room in the house for my older brother <clears throat> I don't know why he's struggling over there in Paris. I don't know why he just won't come home. Now, my father is the very opposite, if you will. He just wants you to get out of the house as quickly as you can. Uh, don't you ever, don't you ever uh, make a mistake and get up in my dad's house at 20 years old and 25 and he'll ask you, how old are you? Uh, how old are you? And then he walks through the house and he'll hit the cupboards and want to know, did you put some groceries up in here? And uh, the, the unction of the Holy Spirit will move on him at about three a.m. in the morning while you're trying to sleep and he'll just have a compunction to vacuum your room while <laughs> see fathers try to get you out of the house they don't want you hanging around but mothers just want you around just oh my little baby and so Paul sensed that there was a development in Timothy that was lacking because there was no real male figure in his life. And that's why he used the word Delia because the word Delia is a more of a spirit than an act it is the spirit affair it is a timidity that many of us have we not only do we have ominous circumstances to face but we have this proclivity to be timid anyway some of us we draw back 
we're not bold enough to present ourselves even though we're gifted and oftentimes folk with less gift but more boldness seems to move into arenas that we should have long moved in I'm talking to somebody tonight I can hear a rat licking ice uh, and oftentimes this tendency keeps us from stepping into the door that God opens because we have been developed in a way where we have a drawback disposition and with about everything that we face uh, the Greeks took it further because they understood that there was another word that meant caution and this caution now became a reverential caution because it understood the disposition of the power of God in this sense when Paul uses it he's indicating that if you've got to be afraid of anybody then you ought to be afraid of God because if God is against you there is no power in the universe that can change his action towards you ah and so it's interesting how this word fear has evolved in the sense of reverence because now you have brought me into a sense of fear Satan but if I'm going to bow to anybody I'm going to only bow to God because I understand he is the only power that I should ever be afraid of and if I've got God on my side as the psalmist says whom shall I fear now Trench the etymologist he said this he said and I quote that mingled fear and love which combine constitutes the piety of man towards God he says the Old Testament places its emphasis on fear but the New Testament places its emphasis on love though there was fear of God in the saints now there had to be fear of God in the saints then but love was in the background I'm scared of you because I know who you are but I love you because you have removed anything that I should be afraid of I will not run from the enemy but I will stand and face him and let him know I am a child of the king uh, can I take it further you see what Satan's ploy is is to cripple the mobility of the child of God and how does he do that he imitate he in intimidates you by your circumstances and he intimidates by negative character development uh, you think the devil's got you going through some stuff and it doesn't want it to stick he wants you to be scarred that's his tactic his tactic is not just to put you through a series of negative events he wants the negative events to become a part of who you are so that you look over the history of failure and the history of competition and the history of intimidation and then you forecast that because of what I've been through I cannot achieve anything tomorrow his tactic then is to neutralize the power of the spirit by controlling the mental state of the vessel I wonder am I talking to anybody what he wants to do because he realizes that the gift of God was given before God catabolate through the earth in place before he put the foundation of the world he had chosen you if Satan is to mess with your gift he has to go back into eternity and stop God from giving it to you <laughs> yeah, that's why the gift of God is without repentance <laughs> because God already knew what you would do with the gift when he gave it to you that's why he doesn't take it back now so people say if you don't use it you lose it that's a lie the gift of God is without 
without repentance. If you don't use it, what will happen is you will end up being in judgment for having something from God you didn't use. When you discover your gifted, Satan discovers your gifted. And he knows he can't stop your gift from functioning, so he decides to stop the vessel that's got the gift. Ah, if I can get you scared enough, you won't take that next step that God puts in your path. If I can get you scared enough and bring you through enough situations that cause you fear, I can block your mental state so that your mind will not release your will. Can I preach to you like I feel it? The reason God talks to us and teaches us is to bring us into comprehension of what he has done in us and comprehension leads to apprehension because you have to apprehend what you comprehend once you apprehend the mind then engages the will because Satan knows that once your will is engaged the battle is already over Mm, I feel the Holy Ghost once your will I will bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth he does not want your will to be engaged because he keeps you flipping and flopping because he brings fear into your life and when you get fear fearful now you become double-minded and when you become double-minded you cannot engage the wheel and so the double-minded man gets nothing from the Lord why because he is unstable in all of his ways in order to engage your will you have to be stable in the fact that the Lord is on my side and if God is on my side I can look the devil in the face and say I'm gonna shout in your face um, I feel it here don't, don't. Woo, I feel. Uh, the prayer of the disciples they said and now Lord behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word now notice the now the now things in this present situation uh, I need to pray in the middle of now things when Satan begins to move against me to bring up fear I need to get on my knees and call out to God in the middle of what's going on now and when he said grant it's active imperative urgency of the air is active imperative it says do it now while he's doing what he's doing you do what you do because this is just a setup for a revelatory experience with the power of God he's not challenging me but he's challenging you I wish you knew how to put it on God I wish you knew how to take it off yourself and give it to God and let the Lord know he's trying to stop me from praising you and I need you to get up here the now intimidation designed to neutralize the power of their message and it takes boldness to release it you got to be bold to open your mouth now here's the response the place was shaken I feel holiness here anytime you get bold enough you shake up some stuff because the Holy Ghost shakes up stuff oh God and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak the word of God with boldness the devil's trying to shut your mouth he's trying to steal your praise he's trying to cause you to lose your energy and back up when you ought to stand up uh, because out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh God 
did not gift you to go get in a corner and let everything pass you by but he gifted you to step up and let the world know that there is a God inside of me and the gift that he has given me is given to overcome the things of the devil can I preach like I feel it how much time do I have do I have a few more minutes uh, you see the power to overcome the natural threatening is the supernatural that is already in you the natural ability of the spirit you have been given can I say that again the natural ability of the spirit is supernatural to your situation and this is contradistinctive to Delia because now I have the spirit of power the spirit of love and the spirit of a sound mind I feel something pushing me here it's power controlled by love and because I love you I'll give you the power that gives you strength over Satan and this is what leads to a sound mind you got to be crazy if you think God gave you a gift for Satan to crush it you got to be crazy if you backing up from a foe that has already been defeated you got to be crazy if you think God made your situation to run you God made you to run your situation I feel something pushing me here. This sound mindedness then is a self controlled thinker. No rush, no hurry. I'm patient. Uh, can I preach like I feel it? Somebody bring me a chair. You got to learn how to wait it out. You know, you got to learn how to just sit it out. Because when God has fixed it for you, you got to learn how to wait out your enemies. Yes, yes. Dakamazo. Yeah, I'll be sitting right here till you liars stop lying. I'll be sitting right here till the main boss is fired. I'll be sitting right here till you get out of my business. I'll be sitting right here because I'm waiting you out. I'm waiting out every demon that has come up my way. I'm waiting out every demonic power that's trying to mess me up. I ain't going nowhere. God bless me with this house. God bless me with this job. God bless me with this gift. And the devil is alive. I'm going to run. Take it if you can. Mm, I feel it in here. I feel somebody gotten touched. And so here then is the eternal conflict. Because if you're gift dominated and not self dominated, then you'll move in the power of your gift. This is not me, but it's God in me. I'm just a vessel that he's using to promote his will. And I'm not going to sit here and let circumstance stop me from doing what God would have me to do. Can I preach like I feel it? You've got to overcome the intimidation of character development. Because the flesh is an absorbing sponge of all satanic, worldly, and situational intimidation it is the flesh and your perception that's got you feeling like you can't make it you know you're gifted you know God has laid his hand on you but it's that generation of negatives that has now got you feeling like you can't take the step because mama told you and grandmama told you that nobody in the family has ever ever become anything we have all been on welfare none of us have been to college and nobody's got a degree well I'll be the first mm, might as well have church Timmy I'll be the 
the first. Somebody's got to start it somewhere. And it might as well begin with me. I feel the Holy Ghost. You can't allow yourself to be a storage warehouse of all the negative stuff that Satan has put your way. That's why the Holy Ghost is a breath. That's why he blows. It's from the nostrils of God. That's why every now and then it was the sound of a rushing mighty wind. So he can blow away some of that garbage that has been stored up in your negative development. You're not a garbage dump. You're not a place of manipulation or a place of negative control. That's why he talks about the quickening spirit to cause to come alive an awakening I have never experienced in the place of manipulation because Satan wants to manipulate and control and he wants to bring you to a place where you believe you can't come out of every circumstance that you're in and undoubtedly you got somebody in your life who has the unmitigated gall and audacity to say to you you can't be nothing without me uh, you ought to look them in the face and tell them you must be God because the only one I can't be anything without is God himself if you stir up the gift it'll give you a new vitality which calls for engaging the wheel and take you into the sphere of the spirit so you're walking in the supernatural release that has released you from the debt of the natural have I told you to touch your neighbor yet well I'm getting ready to do it give somebody high five and say you gotta step out of the natural into the supernatural because you don't owe the flesh anything I'm tired of being intimidated by the wall and release the old comforts but God has placed something new that I'm obligated to walk in the power of what's new and forget those things which are behind I feel like walking here give somebody high five and say I don't owe the ghetto anything I don't owe poverty anything I don't owe ignorance anything I don't owe being messed up anything I don't owe being sad anything it's my time to break out and let the devil know I've been through some stuff but that don't stop anything I don't owe a debt to pain and to be confused all the time and don't know whether I'm coming or going but I owe the spirit of the Lord the power to rise up in my circumstance and tell the Lord you gave it to the right one cause I'm getting ready to use it I feel like preaching in here give somebody high five and say there's a new sheriff in town this is love under new management I'm getting ready to move in the power of the Holy Ghost I'm not going to keep you up all night but you got to kill the influence of what will ultimately kill you you got to break down everything around you that's trying to mess with your mind you got to get away from folk that's always negative and always telling Telling you what you can't do you gotta break away from folk that's always got something to say about your past my past was not with Jesus but my future will be with the Lord because you gotta change your attitude and let the devil know if you go knock me out then knock me out but I've got a feeling you have already hit me with your best punch and I am 
am still standing. I feel like preaching to somebody. I feel like giving God the glory. That's why he said we haven't received the spirit of a slave. I feel like preaching here. Tell somebody I'm not a slave, but I am a son. I'm not under the law, but I'm under the spirit. And the spirit has blown me up. Can I preach like I feel it? Shake your neighbor's hand like you're going to shake it off and say, neighbor, stop trying to fit where you don't belong. God has moved you to another level and you're trying to fit with folk you don't belong to. Anytime they start acting strange, it's because it's time to break out. Break out of bondage. Break out of poverty. Break out of sadness. Break out of depression. I'm breaking out. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel like lifting him up. Give somebody a high five and say break out. I know you've been through something. I know they talked about you. I know they said you couldn't make it. But that don't stop nothing. Your husband is gone. But that don't stop nothing. You lost your house. But tell the devil that don't stop nothing. You lost your best friend. But that ain't gonna stop me from moving to the next level. That ain't gonna stop me from telling the devil get out of my house. I feel the Holy Ghost. Look at your neighbor. Say I see your tears. But it ain't gonna stop nothing. I know you've been hurt but it ain't gonna stop nothing I know they plotted against you tried to destroy you but you can tell them do what you want to do but that won't stop my anointing that won't stop my joy that won't stop my power that won't stop me from doing the will of the Lord yeah I feel like preaching in here do I have somebody that's bold enough to look their neighbor in the face and say suck it up and get up suck it up and keep on moving suck it up and let the devil know I'm back I'm back Break out. I feel like preaching in here. But somebody said, Break out. Break out. You've been restricted much too long. You've been held much too long. Touch somebody says, excuse me, I'm getting ready to break out. Break out my finances. Break out my spirit. Break out my anointing. Break out my power. Break out. For God has not given you spirit of fear. Look at somebody and say you're too gifted to be broke. somebody to treat you like a piece of trash break out (laughs) 
too gifted to accept what everybody says when you know what God has made you. Satan is trying to control you by negative intimidation. But God has sent a word to you tonight. Shake yourself. Get back in the race. Let the circumstance know I found out who I am. And I've discovered what I have. And when the who you are comes together with what you have. I'm closing. I want you to take one person by both hands. And to that person in here. God designed and mapped your life. And Satan wants you to detour. I'd rather go down a, a rough road that's going somewhere than an easy road that is a dead end. And now all you have to do is engage your will. Because once that will is engaged, there is no stopping you. I will, I will, I will. I will do your will. I will be who you would have me to be. I will overcome these tears. I will overcome these obstacles. I will, I will, I will. Because I've grasped the power that lies within me. Squeeze one hand. Whatever things we bind on earth are bound in heaven. Whatever things we loose on earth. He's talking about the gospel, but I'd like to accommodate the text and use it for prayer right now. Squeeze one hand, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I bind fear. I bind depression. I bind low self-esteem. I bind every thought of failure. And I claim victory right now. Squeeze the other hand. I loose a fresh anointing. I loose a spirit of victory. I loose power. I loose financial prosperity. I loose spiritual determination. I loose this gift in the name of Jesus. And I declare you to be blessed. Now loose those hands and give God the praise. Break out. Break out. That ain't gonna stop nothing. Woo! That's not gonna stop a thing. For though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I feel a move of God tonight.